Okay, Hayes Mega here. I'm shooting a, a kind of a how-to vlog. It's more probably a vlog than a how-to uh, to change your front sprocket on the Victory Impulse TT. So uh, I'd actually kind of tried to start this last night, and then I'm just like, whoa, it's, what's going on here? So uh, so anyway, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start a fresh video now. Um, but uh, here's the uh, the sprocket. This is the front sprocket. This is actually for a Gixxer 250. Uh, I don't even think they sell a Gixxer 250 in the states. But uh, but anyway, the, um, that is supposedly the sprocket that will work for uh, the Impulse, um, an aftermarket one. Uh, to date, I don't think there is a there is actually a front sprocket that that's made specifically for the Impulse. Um, Polaris does not even sell it, so. Um, the, you can get a rear sprocket from Polaris, but you cannot get a front sprocket. So the front sprocket is like a kind of like it's kind of like a unicorn part. <laughs> but uh, people have said that they've uh, they've used a Gixxer 250 front sprocket, and that's this is the one. So it's a Juliet Tango Foxtrot 1439er dot one three. So the dot one three means this is a 13 tooth sprocket. The the stock sprocket on the Impulse is a 14 tooth. So, uh, so yeah, um, I'm dropping a tooth so I can get some more acceleration. Um, yeah, so the benefits of this is uh, I, I took my bike to the drag strip last week, and I feel like I want to get more acceleration out of it. Uh, I feel like I don't use the fifth and the sixth gears enough, you know? So I think uh, if, we, if we gear it down, if we make the gearing shorter, um, it'll... I mean, it'll be a better bike to ride, you know. Uh, as it stands, it get, it's getting like a 14, 14, 8, 14, 9, and 14, 3, uh, 15, 3, and 15, 4. So it's like a, the stock impulse is like a high 14 second to like a low or mid 15 second quarter mile bike. Um, so it's not, it's not the peppiest uh, motorcycle out there, but Maybe we can uh, maybe we can shave a second off of that if we drop the the counter spark. So this so supposedly when you drop a tooth on the when you drop a tooth or you add a tooth on the sprocket uh, front sprocket, it's like I think it's I think it's as if uh, you you're adding or subtracting three uh, teeth on the rear sprocket. So it's uh, it's more uh, it has a more ef more noticeable effect on the gear ratio. Changing the front uh, the front sprocket tooth um, setup, so so by dropping one tooth, it's like I'm taking three teeth off the back of the sprocket, basically. Um, I do plan on getting a bigger rear sprocket at some point, but uh, I haven't like really found one yet. I kind of have found one. I'm trying to find a cheaper one, like they're like 80 bucks or something. I, I don't think I don't really want to pay that much for a freaking uh, <laughs> a rear sprocket, but but the rear sprocket lasts longer time. Uh, well, yeah, one of the um, one of the drawbacks to getting a smaller front sprocket is that your ch probably your chain and your sprocket your the front sprocket will wear out faster because it's, it's spinning faster. So and uh, and like the the chain has to go through a, a tighter a tighter loop. Um, but I think just dropping one won't be too bad. I wouldn't I wouldn't advise dropping it any lower. Um, uh yeah so my on my dr650 i dropped the sprocket to a 14 tooth from 15 so so i guess this is, it's a common size uh 13 14 and 15 sprockets um, so so if you want to get more acceleration out of the impulse uh, out of your motorcycle you want to drop the front sprocket size or increase the rear sprocket size if you want to uh and if if you want more top end speed, or you want to bring your your RPMs down, like when you're cruising or something, you can get a bigger front sprocket and a smaller rear sprocket. It's if just think about like uh, think about if you've ever ridden a mountain bike or you know what a, a bicycle with gears, and it's it is easier to pedal if you if you use smaller sprockets in the front, and and the bigger and the and the biggest rockets in the rear. So when you want, when you do, when you're climbing those mountains, you want as much torque as possible. That's when it's time to drop the front and raise the rear um, gearing. 
So, so there you go. That's a that's a little introduction why I want to do this. So I kind of started it last night, and I'm telling you, um, Hades Omega has never worked on a bike that has a hydraulic clutch before. <laughs> so this is all new to me. I didn't know that you had to take the slave cylinder out and everything. It um, it's much more of a pain in the ass than than doing a, a bike that has like a cable clutch. Um, I'm not a big fan of hydraulic clutches. There's a lot of stuff that can go wrong with them. Uh, cable clutches are so much more simple. They just require adjustment every once in a while. And yeah, obviously the cable will stretch and break eventually. But um, but yeah. Uh, but the the impulse does have a hydraulic clutch right here. So I will be going. I'll going over the procedures. The way I'm going to do it. Um, uh, there's a. There's something that uh, that that's gonna happen that uh, that I'm not unsure of, and we will see what happens. I did not. I was debating whether I'm gonna go buy brake fluid today to uh, to to refill the clutch reservoir if we do have to do it. But basically, we have to unbolt the um, the slave cylinder. So here I have the uh, the Bramo factory manual printout from it. Um, I was able to uh, download the factory service manual from Bramo forums. Um, and uh, so I didn't have to buy the $180 uh, Victory one. Uh, I wish Victory would just let. You, I wish all manufacturers would just let you, uh, you know, download the service manual. And they couldn't make any money, but at least they'll be, they'll, they'll be saving some trees. It's not like I need it all the time. But anyway, so this is the front drive sprocket transmission. Um, how to remove the sprocket? So it says something about, yeah, use a uh, new brake fluid from a container because it might have moisture in it. Hopefully we won't have to, hopefully we won't have to address any of these. Uh, do not operate the brake lever. Why the brake lever? Well, brake caliper. Okay, well, we're not even going to mess with the brakes. I don't even know why that's in there. Uh, maybe that's for the rear. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it says we have to take the rear wheel off. Hayes Omega is going to try and not take the rear wheel off because... This is a smaller sprocket. It should be easier to install than the stock sprocket. So hopefully, if I don't have to take the wheel off, I won't. But but we will have to adjust the, the chain. So uh, so so do not operate the clutch lever while the system is disassembled. So um, all right. So first, raise and support the rear motorcycle with suitable stand or other adjustable support. So there we go. I've got it on the rear stand already. This is my Harbor Freight uh, um, swing arm spool stand, rear stand. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to go to, we're trying to go to the drag strip tomorrow again. So I'm trying to get this done so we can get a little bit faster, you know. And I think it would be less stress on the, on the machine too, is what I'm thinking, because, you know, it doesn't have to work as hard. Um, yeah, so there it is. It's on the stand already. Supported. Okay, step two. Cover the rear swing arm in highlighted areas to protect against damage from chain and additional component removal during procedure. Okay, I... step two. Done. Uh, at least I, I hope it is. So I just kind of got the rag that I use to clean chains. I just stuck it on, on the swing arm. Uh, I don't think it's going to make a big difference. And I don't, you know, unless you're not careful, you may scratch the crap out of your swing arm. You can always repaint it or whatever, but it's got a lot of junk all over it. I bet. Um, so remove the rear wheel assembly. Um, so we're going to try and not do that. We're not going to do that right now. Um, if we have to to get the the sprocket out, um, we may have to. Uh, what we may have to do is uh, loosen the adjuster nuts, so um, so we can get enough slack in the chain to take the um, the thing I'm gonna jigger out. But um. All we gotta really do is derail the chain. So, um, so remove the clutch slave cylinder. Please refer to the slave the slave cylinder uh, instructions. So this is the clutch slave cylinder instructions. Same stuff about the fluids. It says remove the two securing kickstand sensor and tie sensor aside. Also, I already took this this cover plate off. Um, this was right here, I think. This was right here. I took it off. You actually don't need to take it off. Yeah, you don't need to take it off. Actually. Um, so basically, what's going to have to happen? What's happening in this step is the whole kickstand assembly has to come out, and and uh, you kind of that's why you have to support the rear. Um, 
I've never worked on an electric bike before or any, anything with a frame like this. So this is an interesting setup here. Uh, I think the batteries are here and here, and this is your frame right here. So everything just kind of just hangs off the bike right here. So I've never worked. I never. I work on like the cradle type chassis um, frames for motorcycles. So this is something new for me too. So I was kind of looking at this design last night. And I'm like, man, there's a. It's very intricately designed. There's like brackets here, and then there's a the kickstands here, and so uh, they they found like an interesting way to 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 put the stand basically we, you have to take this whole assembly out with the foot peg and the shifter and the kickstand so so the first step was to take the the kickstand sensor thingamajigger out that's this guy here with the two little allen bolts so we'll take that out um i will go wipe it down it looks kind of dirty first it's like right there that little box that's sitting on the uh, I'm assuming they want you to take it out because the whole assembly has to come out and, and it, it'll get stuck on the wire if, uh, if you leave it there okay I got some light so uh, we can see what we're doing so there is a sensor right there and I already got the Allen Allen wrench we're gonna loose loosen it it's like I can you can barely have room to get access get access to this thing there's two Two bolts. There's one here and there. A little pain in the ass this is. Like they just barely give you enough room to get to it. And uh, it's a uh, it's a very small bolt. It's a three millimeter Allen head. So let's uh, continue taking. Uh, okay, so uh, so I've kind of cleaned up the the sensor a little bit before I take it take it take it all the way out. I was looking at like how does this uh, how does this kickstand work? So basically, there's a little um, there's like a magnet here. I, one of, there's a magnet on something. Um, that's put this thing here, and then when this moves over the sensor, so you can see that little arm there. When this moves over the sensor, that that trips the thing, and it tells you, hey, the kickstand's up. Go ahead and uh, fire. You, we can we take off. We're armed. So yeah. Um, it was pretty dirty. There's like some stuff coming out, so I put a little drip pan under it to keep my work area clean. So the garage doesn't get all yucky. I just thought that was something interesting to note. <laughs> so like, now is a good time to kind of clean up. My bike only has 3,000 miles, and it's already kind of nasty. So. <laughs> okay, it's out. Um, she's not there anymore. I kind of like tucked it under like the assembly right here well, when we take the whole thing out we'll just have to be careful not to, not to like rip it out or anything and to make sure you get it you when you take it out you put it back the way you found it um, I found that if you use a, a regular style allen wrench as opposed to the ski handle stuff it's a little it's easier because the, the foot peg gets in the way um, I guess you could take the foot peg off it'll make it a little easier too but uh, I did so there it is so that's that step and be very careful the bolts the bolts are very small, so it looks like they'll strip real easy. Hopefully we can get them in fine. Um, so now it says to remove the five bolts securing the kickstand assembly. So that is, um, so, let's go with the manual here. So I did notice that the, uh, that the impulse is a little, di um, the impulse TT is a little different. Um, so there's this one, A, right here. Um, you notice the cover plate is still on it. They said don't take the cover plate off because the, er, the cover plate is actually bolted to this and you don't really need to take it off. I thought I could just take the cover plate off and take the thing off. But, um, but as you can see, the, uh, the sprocket is, uh, the sprocket has like, there's a, there's a cover over it. There's a plastic cover over it that needs to come off. And the plastic cover is bolted in with the, um, stupid slave cylinder. Um, anyway, um, anyway, this is uh, the first bolt, and then this is the B bolt. It's hiding under there somewhere, right here. This is the B bolt right here, very big. And then uh, and they, they tell you all the torque settings, but they're all in uh, newton meters. It's never worked with newton meters before. They could put both, I guess. Bolt B, and then bolt C is this one here. And then bolt D is this one here. It isn't so 
the Ample CT does not have a bolt there, so I guess that's something they changed from when they went from the, the regular Ampulse, the, the Bravo Ampulse to the Victory Ampulse. They, they don't have this. This kind of just sits there on that little bearing. So I'm going to go ahead and take those out. That's the A bolt. B bolt. I mean, this is the, uh, the D bolt or the C bolt. There's a monster one back here. That one is really okay, bad. so the large bolt down there. I'm looking on the other side of the bike here. And the large bolt right here goes to this nut here. So you're going to have to get a nut over there. So what I did, this one's the biggest pain in the ass here. I hope it doesn't make the, the gearbox leak or anything. I'll take that off. Um, so I'm using a a very long, a long, uh, a long Allen head uh, socket extension with a uh, with the um, with the ratchet on there. Um, so basically, I'm just going to use the impact gun and take that that locking nut out. That's on the other side, and it's a it's a 17 millimeter. pretty easy it was really hard to try to move it from the other end and I was like like is there a bolt is there a nut on the other end I'm like sure enough there was so now it should be pretty easy to move out yeah it's really easy now so and you kind of have to maneuver it under the, the hydraulic line for the clutch all right so that's that and that, that just slides out after you have to just get it out you gotta move the clutch line out so you can get the bolt out. And I'll start taking the rest of these out. So just make sure when you put it back, you torque it right. It's much easier to take the nut out on the other side. Plus, uh, if you uh, there it goes. Uh, plus if you uh, what's the word? Uh, if you uh, if you just uh, torque on that uh, that Allen head, it will. Uh, I'll just um, I'll just spin the nut on the other side. So. Okay. What else have to come out? Hey, this one here. Yes. Okay, I didn't even touch that one. This is a six mil. And I do notice they use Loctite for all these. Oh, okay, so it looks like all of these are different sizes. No, they're not. Okay, okay so now uh, the this is why they told you to undo the, the sensor so it doesn't get caught. Well, in. I'll tell you what. Um, it looks like you don't really have to take all of it up. You just have to loosen it and just let it hang on this because this thing is being a pain in the ass. So there it is. So there it is. Um, the kickstand assembly, which is basically the kickstand, the sensor, um, the shift lever, the linkage, and the foot peg. All that is, all that is the is one assembly, the kickstand assembly. So there you go. Um, so. So what I did is I took this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, and I loosened this bolt. Uh, if you don't loosen this, it won't be able to swing like that. And now I'm just going to let it hang from here. Okay, one bit. make sure you don't lose these little bolts too. You, I'm not sure, I hate to say it, I don't even think you need to, I don't even think you need to take this out. Um, so I had trouble taking this long bolt out that goes to... Um, because the the clutch line is in the way, so I decided we're really we just we were just working on this the sprocket, so there's no need to to move it any to to take the whole assembly out. So I'm just gonna let it hang right there, like that. Um, I don't even think we needed to take this out. It looks like yeah, 
It looks like it could easily reach, so just try not to strip the bolts. It looks like they use the blue Loctite on a lot of these bolts too. So just it's gonna be kinda hard to get it in. Just make sure when you put it back you torque it properly.